fifth grade for your next project you are going to be doing a weaving you're actually going to be making a weaving and creating a small bag while doing so so before we talk about the details of your actual project let's talk about fiber arts as a whole so fiber arts, that's, that would be the overarching term and would encompass a lot of other artworks that are also using fibers. So let's talk about that. A fiber is a rope or string used as a component of composite materials or matted into sheets to make products such as paper or felt. So we have things, lots of different items in the world that are made of different types of fibers, right? The clothes you are all wearing, um, your hair, your hair is made of hair fibers. Um, we have, you know, lots of different items hanging in the classroom that are all made of different types of fibers. If you go into your house and look around, carpets, um, like I said, clothes, curtains, anything your, your couch is made out of, uh, all of these things are made of different types of fibers. And so fibers can be broken down into two different main types. We have synthetic fibers and we have natural fibers. So synthetic fibers are artificially made fibers. These are composed mostly of stretched plastics, water and air. So these are fibers that are not made in nature. These are made by people in factories. And um, a lot of us are wearing synthetic fiber clothes today, right? So if, if you've ever stopped and looked at the tag on the inside of your clothes, it will list exactly what fibers that particular article of clothing is made out of. And so you might see some things that um, maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't. And I would guarantee that at least one thing that you're wearing is probably made from synthetic fibers. So things like rayon, polyester, spandex, lycra, all of those things have synthetic fibers mixed in with them um, or, or made of synthetic fibers made, like I said, from stretched plastics in a factory. The opposite of a synthetic fiber is a natural fiber. These are fibers that came from nature. So like I said, your hair, your hair is a natural fiber, but not just your hair, the hair or fur on a lot of different animals, those are also considered natural fibers. So like wool um, on a sheep or on an alpaca maybe, um, cotton, hemp, which comes from a plant, uh, bamboo, so even wood fibers. So all of these things come from nature. So again, making them natural fibers. And whether these fibers are synthetic or natural, they can be turned into many different types of products, right? Like all the things that I listed at the beginning. All right, so here are some adorable alpacas. And if you look at the top photo, you can see what they look like before they are sheared. So they're growing their fur, their, their fleece actually is what it's called. They're growing their fleece um, nice and fluffy. They look ready to go. And then you can see in the bottom picture, they um, have been sheared, right? So a company comes in and will actually remove all of their fleece and will clean it and um, turn it into yarn or um, fabric or whatever the person that owns the alpacas wants them to turn it into. And then, you know, it can be bleached so that the color is then all taken out of it. And then it can be dyed all different colors and turned into, you know, gloves, hats, sweaters, socks, all different types of um, products. So fiber arts, fiber arts, the definition of this is a style of fine art which uses materials such as fabric, yarn, natural and synthetic fibers. Okay, so any type of art that is made using fibers um, is going to be considered fiber art. So let's look at some different examples of that. So you may or may not have heard of some of these things on this list. As I say the items on the list, if you've heard of it, you can raise your hand. Knitting, crocheting, needle felting, embroidery, sewing, quilting, weaving, silk painting, 
and batiking. So there's more than just that. And I, I guess that most of your hands are raised in the classroom. You might not have heard of all of them, but you've probably heard of at least one or two of them. And you guys are going to be doing weaving. Like I said, we'll talk more details on that in a little bit here. So let's watch this quick YouTube video just to see some of those different types of art in action. Here's some examples of fiber arts. We have quilting. Another example of a quilt. I'm gonna bet some of you have quilts at home. Then we have weavings. This is what you guys are going to be making. All different types of weavings out there. Some are flat, some are turned into bags, like what you guys are making. We have knitting. Remember, knitting is done with knitting needles. The knitted calculator. A lot of people have knitted scarves or sweaters or hats, mittens. Then we have crocheting. Crocheting is done with a hook. You can see this kind of has more of the look of like lace. So again, that's crocheting. Then we have embroidery. So this is almost like drawing with uh, thread. So really detailed you can get with embroidery. Then we have felting and this is made using um, natural felt fibers, so like wool. And then it's kind of like, uh, there's a bunch of needles that get pushed into it to make sculptures. There's also silk painting, where a piece of silk is stretched across a frame and then painted on with special silk paints. And then that you know, piece of silk can be worn as a scarf for hung on the wall. A lot of times the colors in silk painting are very vibrant. Then we have batiking. Batik is really interesting. You can do this at the high school if you take art at that level. This involves um, wax resisting um, and a lot of steps of dyeing the fabric and drawing with wax. Then we have sewing, which everybody I'm sure is familiar with, right? All of our clothes have been sewn. All right, so let's talk more specifically about weaving terms that you guys want to be familiar with because you are going to be making a weaving. So whenever we're talking about the different things that we're using to make that weaving, you need to know what I'm referring to if I use these terms. So the first term up here is a loom. Everybody say loom. All right, so you may have heard of a loom before Probably most of you used a loom before, and if you're like, mm, I don't think so, if you've ever used a rainbow loom, right? Remember those rubber band bracelets? If you've ever used a rainbow loom, that is also a loom. Looms can look all different. There's a ton of different types of looms out there. And this is a device that's used to weave cloth in the case of a rainbow loom it's going to weave a uh, rubber band bracelet but this is going to hold all of the threads under tension to facilitate interweaving so think about it in terms of a rainbow loom it's going to hold all of those rubber bands under tension so that you're able to kind of cross one over another so the same thing goes for the type of loom that you guys are going to use and I am holding up a loom that you guys are going to use at the front of the classroom. So it is essentially a piece of cardboard. You could make this at home if you ever wanted to do this at home. Um, it's a piece of cardboard that has notches cut in the top and cut into the bottom and that that is what holds those strings um, under tension or those threads under tension. But I'll show you some pictures of different types of looms. Okay, and then the other two terms, the first one is warp. And the warp is the set of lengthwise uh, yarns or threads that are held in tension on the frame or loom. And the last one is the weft. These are the threads that are being weaved through the warp, okay? So we have the loom that you guys are gonna be using. Yours is gonna be made out of cardboard, very fancy, all right? Um, and then we are going to first add the warp to that. 
The warp you end up not really seeing too much at the end. The weft is what gets added to the warp. That's what we're gonna spend the most time on. The weft is very time consuming, but very fun in my opinion. And the weft is where you're able to add different stripes, different colors of yarn to your weaving, and it gets added onto the warp. The warp holds everything in place. It's, think of the warp as like the skeleton underneath. All right, so here are some different types of looms. So some of them are massive in size. Like you can see the one on the left, this girl is sitting in front of it. It looks like it would you know, take up a big portion of the classroom if we had that here in the room. And same thing with the other one. And notice there's even like petals at the bottom there. Those are little petals that you can step on and move and function different parts of the loom. So these are really fancy, um, more uh, high, high, lots of obviously more expensive um, and to create a, a much larger piece of um, cloth or weaving, right? All right, so here's one on the left that is like a wooden frame and you can see the vertical strings, that's the warp on there. And then those colorful pieces, that's the weft. And then we have another one that's like a tabletop loom um, there on the right hand side. Okay, so here are some other types of looms. Notice the rainbow loom at the bottom of the screen, right? Um, and then we have one very similar to what you guys are gonna be using on the left on the piece of cardboard. You can even use a paper plate as a loom. If you notice, I do have some examples of uh, paper plate looms here in the classroom, or you could even use a round piece of cardboard. So looms can look a lot of different ways. The main thing is that they hold the threads that uh, make up the weaving under tension so that you're able to create that weaving um, at all. And you can really weave with any type of material. As long as it's bendable, you can make a weaving with it, right? So up top there, we have a paper weaving. If you've never done one, they are pretty fun to make. Maybe we'll have a chance to make one later in the year. Then we have a photo of wire. And then I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to tell what that last photo is. See if you can figure that out. Give you a second to think about it. Those are plastic bags, plastic bags that have kind of been torn into strips and then used to create a weaving. So really you can use like any kind of material as long as it's bendable, you can weave with it. So here's an artist that uses horse hairs. So she dyes the horse hairs different colors and weaves them through a piece of cloth. Pretty cool. You can even see on the right there, the top and the bottom, they're kind of like, the edges are left rough and the horse hairs are kind of hanging off there. Interesting artwork, very textural, right? It would feel very hairy. This artist, Elizabeth Ashdown, uses all different kinds of things, right? Um, she uses, there's a photo, um, one that has a jump rope that she incorporated into her weaving, and then different types of cords and um, various materials that you might not typically think of weaving. She says, I utilize vibrant and fresh color palettes and varied materials such as leather, cork, feathers, metal, and springs in order to create collections that are both contemporary and innovative. All right, so this is uh, a photo of a bridge in Pittsburgh. This is from a number of years ago um, where this is pretty popular. People were doing what they call yarn bombings and basically they were just creating weavings off site and then covering different public um, pieces like a bridge with their different woven pieces. And so, um, you can see the top part of the bridge is even covered. Obviously special permission was granted to be able to do this, but it was pretty cool. And it, you know, it stayed outside even in the weather um, and the whole bridge was, a lot of it was covered by weavings. All right, so functional art. What is functional art? Functional art is something which is both beautiful and useful. Functional art lets us bring incredible works of creativity and beauty into our everyday lives. It has a function while it is also beautifully artistic. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because you guys are making a bag. You are going to have an artwork that you've created that is beautiful, but also has a function, right? You can put things in the bag. So here's some other functional art examples, right? Like there's a big giant comb that also functions as a bike rack. 
There's a beautiful chair, right? It's very, very cool design, interesting design, bright colors, but you can also sit on it. And then we have the bookshelf, the tree up there that is also um, functioning as a bookshelf. All right, so here are examples of the mini bags. I'm gonna show you guys some more details of these in class. You will be adding a flap on there as well and a bead closure. And you can also add a strap. You can make it more of a wristlet or you can add, make it look more like, um, like a little purse where it goes from one side to the other or the strap is optional. And I'm gonna, like I said, show you more examples of this in class. So let's get started.